Since it's been a very long time, I have a lot, a lot to share. And one of them is a design, so that's kind of fun. Splurged on a lot of really gorgeous, gorgeous fibers. Sunset sweater pattern is out, so I knit one for my daughter. Hello and welcome to Golden Hour Knitwear. My name is Camry and today I have a regular podcast episode for you. It's been a very long time since I've updated you all on uh, works in progresses and finished objects and stuff here on YouTube. I've done a little bit better on Instagram, but there's just been a lot going on. Um, I did post a video two weeks ago, which was just like my goals for the year, kind of with fiber and whatnot. Um, and I kind of explained <laughs> my gap in uploads there, but I'll just rehash it again really quick. The last like real episode that I posted besides a lot like two weeks ago was um, was the test call for the sunset sweater, which is now out by the way, it came out like a few days ago. <laughs> I don't even remember how many days it's been. Anyways, um, so that was the test call. And then from that point onwards, I was just like totally brain dead. And burnt out because I was I was organizing the test call, finishing up last minute things on the pattern. I was dyeing kits for my testers, which happened to be over like 200 skeins or almost 200 skeins of yarn. It was a lot. Um, and then just working with testers to make sure everything was going well. But so it's been a lot. And then we had the holidays and then recouping after all the holidays and then just family stuff going on. And I'm finally back to normal. So so here we are. Hopefully we'll get back into a regular schedule here but so yes the sunset sweater pattern is out which is really exciting um it's my first design i feel weird saying my design it's my first pattern my first design whatever you want to call it um that is out and published and whatnot it's really exciting i hoped to have a few ready to go because i had a couple other designs on the needles and i was like ready to i mean not ready to put them into testing but i had a schedule for myself and wanted to put more into testing so that I would have some to release like monthly or every two months or something like that. But I just, I wanted to get through the whole sunset sweater test period and release and learn from everything in that because it was such a huge learning curve. So I wanted to learn from that whole experience before putting any other patterns into testing. So the pattern is up on Ravelry, it'll always be up on Ravelry. The kits that I put together for the pattern are, or for the design are still available. So you're still able to head over to my website and purchase a kit for it if you would like to use the same colors as me or some of my other testers. Um, but they won't be available for very much longer. I'm gonna have to close it down soon. So if you're watching this within the first couple of days of this video coming out, then you're set, you can go order. But if not, then they might be gone still. I'll put a link in the description so you can find it easily. You all completely, completely blew me away <laughs> with the welcome of the sunset sweater. Um, every time I posted about it, that post went crazy, at least for my account, because I have a small audience. Um, but the, the post went crazy. You all commented like crazy. It was so nice. And it reached like number four and five on the Hot Right Now list on Ravelry, which is crazy for my first design and having as small an audience as I do. It's just wild. So thank you, thank you, thank you all for the support and for purchasing the pattern, for saving the pattern, for liking the pattern. Um, for purchasing a kit, if you purchased a kit, I literally did a happy dance every single time. Just happy dances all day long. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I, I'm planning to at some point, probably soon, um, upload a video just me talking about what I've learned through the whole process of putting a pattern through testing while first designing something, knitting something from scratch, I guess, coming up with the colors, like the whole process behind the pattern. Um, and then what it was like to organize a test knit and run a test knit and dye all the kits and put the pattern out and market the pattern and what I learned through the whole process and what I would maybe do differently next time and stuff like that. So that video is coming in the future, hopefully. Um, so expect that. I think that'll be really interesting for others to see and to learn from because there's just not a lot of info out there on what it's like to release a pattern. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. It's a lot of work to put a decent, like a really nice size inclusive, um, really thought through tested pattern out into the world. So that video hopefully is coming soon. Just keep an eye out for it. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are interested. Okay, I think, I think that is everything. <laughs> That's everything for the, the announcements and whatnot. 
Since it's been a very long time, I have a lot, a lot to share. Um, I, I have like a massive pile of stuff here at my feet. I'll try to be quick. There's a lot of things that I was working on like months ago and I just completely lost steam on them because I took a little time away from knitting just so I could get a lot of dyeing done and work on the pattern. Um, so I lost some steam on some stuff. So some of these projects you have seen before and they're still on the needles from several months ago because I just cannot anymore. <laughs> so they're in timeout and I'll quickly, I'll just show them, like say that they're on timeout. Maybe I'll say why, maybe I won't, but I'll try to keep those parts quick. I just needed something fresh, especially with the new year. I just needed new fresh projects. So I guess let's just jump into finished objects. Sorry, I keep looking over here because that's the finished object pile. Um, like I said, I got kind of away from knitting while I was at the beginning of the sunset test, sunset sweater testing period, because I was dying a ton. Um, I was also finishing up advent calendars and getting those out. So November, December were very, very busy for me. And then the beginning of the year was just kind of rough. So, so, I mean, there is some finished objects, but it's mostly little kiddo sweaters and socks and stuff like that. But I still have a lot to show. So. Since it's been a very long time, I have a lot, a lot to share. Um, I, I have like a massive pile of stuff here at my feet. I'll try to be quick. There's a lot of things that I was working on like months ago and I just completely lost steam on them because I took a little time away from knitting just so I could get a lot of dyeing done and work on the pattern. Um, so I lost some steam on some stuff. So some of these projects you have seen before and they're still on the needles from several months ago because I just cannot anymore. <laughs> so they're in timeout and I'll quickly, I'll just show them, like say that they're on timeout. Maybe I'll say why, maybe I won't, but I'll try to keep those parts quick. I just needed something fresh, especially with the new year. I just needed new fresh projects. Before we do that though, <laughs> let's all just take a really quick second to collectively decide to not make fun of my nails because <laughs> they're horribly, horribly done. I never, they're not focusing. I never paint my nails. I know they're horrible. I never paint my nails. But when my little daughter says she wants to paint her nails with me, we paint her nails. And I just, I don't, I don't put very much effort into mine. So, <laughs> so just expect the crappy nails. All right. I don't know what order I finished all these in. I think, I think this is the first thing I finished. Maybe. Well, maybe it was these. If I can find them. Where are they? Oh. Oh, no, no, no. I think, okay. I think the first thing that I finished was my husband's socks. They're finally done. These took forever to knit because they're like the, the large size for my husband and they're knit super long and they're just longer than I ever make my socks. Biggest socks I've ever made. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but I love how they turned out. I thought the yarn was ugly at first. That was my very first attempt at speckling forever and ever ago. But I think they turned out really good. Wow, we're just not focusing today. They, I think they turned out really, really good, especially, sorry if it looks really, really gross. He wears them a lot, which is good. He loves them. <laughs> but I think it turned out really good, especially since I added the contrast, the red contrast. I dyed up some red to match the speckles in the, the gray yarn. And I think it turned out really, really good. So. I'm tempted to make myself some socks just like this, but like yellow or purple speckles or something like that. I don't know, but I don't know if yellow speckles would show up so well in gray, but oh well. Um, I didn't use a pattern for those. I just did a vanilla sock. I just used numbers and you know, I just, I just did a three by one rib, I think. Yeah, and then just stripes up top. I, I didn't, I didn't, you know, do anything super fancy with them. Okay, I think the next thing that I finished, and they're super fuzzy, like they're pretty worn. <laughs> um, I made the posy mitts, I think that's the pattern, by Bluebird Pine Shop, um, out of this alpaca yarn that I have. Now I know alpaca is probably not the best choice to make mittens out of, like 100% alpaca, because I don't think alpaca is as strong or durable as wool, and it doesn't hold a shape as well as wool does. So I'm definitely expecting these to kind of wear out over time. They also, <laughs> they've seen better days. The fuzz is really coming off. They're pilling a lot. I need to give them a little shave, but they have kept my little fingers so warm this, this winter. I think I finished them in December, maybe. 
something like that early November uh, yeah probably December and we had some freezing 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 days early January mid-January so it was so nice to have these big thick bulky weight alpaca mittens to wear while walking the dog I could go outside with two sweaters a coat wool socks and these mittens and be to and, and two pairs of pants and be totally fine and I'm obviously a hat too and it was totally warm it was so nice um so I'm so glad I made those they knit up super super fast as well so I highly recommend them this yarn doesn't have super great stitch definition um but you can kind of see what's going on in this pattern I think it's super cute they're super warm whoa why is this not auto focusing I did modify it I was the way I okay so I measured my hand and according to the pattern I should have knit like the child size or something like that, but my hands aren't like that small. I mean, I'm a small person, but they're not that small. So I cast it on for the child size. I was like, mm, I don't know about this, but I went for it because this is a more of a bulky weight yarn and the pattern I think called for a worsted weight. So I cast it on anyways, and it, it just wasn't working. It was, it was too small. So what I ended up doing was knit the cuff in the child size, but I knit it longer than the child size called for. And then I immediately increased out to have the number of stitches for the small adult size, I think. I'm going off the top of my head and this was two months ago, so I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what I did. Um, and then I just knit the adult, the small adult. I can't remember the sizing, but something like that. And I love them. It knit so fast. like. A couple hours of knitting and bam you're done so I would definitely knit these again um, I would probably I have a lot more of this yarn so if they ever crap out on me I can just make more and I would be totally totally happy doing that <laughs> so those are the posy mitts okay next up and I don't know if these were finished before those mitts or after but I knit the halfsy socks. I think you saw these on the podcast. I just, I didn't have them finished, but I love these. I dyed the yarn for these. I was just messing around with different dye, with colors and dye techniques and whatnot. And I made a little mini skein set and I, with fingering weight yarn, and I absolutely love them. So I held the yarn double for these socks. So I knit the DK weight version of the halfsy socks. And the way these socks are knit, um, is you knit them flat so you don't do the cuff yet but you cast on like however many stitches for this however many stitches for this half and it's knit flat and then you knit the, the heel and then you keep knitting flat and then you join the round for the toe and then you seam up the side now it is a paid for pattern um and I normally wouldn't go in that much detail in the construction, but you can easily tell that that's what's going on when you look at pictures of the pattern in progress. So, um, I, the pattern, I love the pattern. I think it's really fun. It is kind of weird to have that seam up the side of the socks. Um, I think it would be less, it's not, you know, that annoying or anything to me. It's fine. Um, and I've loved wearing them in the cold, cold months, but... I think it would be much less noticeable in the fingering weight version. There is a DK weight version and a fingering weight version. So I think it'd be much less noticeable in the fingering weight version. This one just knit up so fast and it was so nice to have just a fast project. You do knit using Intarja, which was my first time using Intarja. Uh, so it was, just, it was just a lot of fun. <laughs> I think I would probably definitely knit these again. Um, so what you can see, I did the rust and like moody green yellow rust variegated for the stripes on top and then on the bottom I used the yellow and yellow and rust variegated together so I had a tonal on the bottom tonal on top variegated on bottom variegated on top and then I used the green for the cuff and toe and then I did the opposite on this sock so I did the the rust I don't even know what color to call this. It's got all the colors in there, but I dyed it on very low heat. So the colors just met, blended together a lot, which I think is really fun and turned out really cool for this yarn anyways. And then I did not have enough of the green, the white and green mini skein the 20 gram mini skein to do a full cuff for them so I did 
yellow for this cuff and the rust for this cuff and then I just bound off in the green um, and that's literally all that I had I used all the green variegated yarn for this I might have like one gram left but that's it and then the rest I have like three or four maybe five grams left so so you can squeeze these out of a five set five a set of five mini skeins like 20 gram minis you can definitely get these out of 100 grams of yarn. Very fun, I would knit these again. I might even go for the fingering weight next time just to see about that seam. But these were a lot of fun. And you can do them a ton of different ways. Like you can do a whole color, you don't have to do stripes. You can do a whole color here, a whole color here. You could do some color blocking. So like half of it is one color, half of it is another color. These are perfect to use at mini skeins or scraps because you can play with color placement and just it's just so much fun. So. Lots of fun. Next, I finished up, or I started and finished. Whoa, that end is popping through. Anyways, I finished these, uh, what, what's the name? Self-striping, these self-striping Christmas socks. I, I brought out my sock blockers so that I could show you all better my socks. I haven't even put anything on them. Okay, there it is. So I, in December, I was just, I wanted Christmas socks and I was dying to try self-striping yarn and I wanted some like Christmas throw up socks that were obviously just bright red, bright green, right? And so I got these in a D-stash, just on that D-stash discord that's out there. Um, I just posted that I was in search of Christmas self-striping yarn and somebody responded and they, we got in touch and I got this yarn from them. It's Polka Dot Creek. Um, I don't remember the name of the yarn, but I absolutely love it. This was so much fun. I was I was knitting these up while I was dyeing the kits for my testers for the sunset sweater. It was so nice because I was just like working my tail off. <laughs> I was working so hard on those kits and dyeing them. And and then I would come up while the dye was setting and they were just sitting on the heat. And I had no energy to do anything, but I just wanted simple knitting. I would just work on these little socks. And they were so much fun because they were Christmassy. And they're so engaging because it's self-striping. And I just, it was so fun. I loved it. And so I'm super glad that I did that this year. Um, or I guess last year. And I think I need to make myself Christmas socks every year. I don't know if I'll always get like a self-striping or something like that. I, I also saw a lot of really, really fun and cute color work Christmas socks on Instagram this year. And I saw them like, you know, the week before Christmas. I was like, there's no way I'm going to knit these before Christmas. So I think next year I need to make myself some super fun color work Christmas socks. So we'll see. <laughs> um, I used a, what is this? German short row heel. I used a German short row heel on these. I don't love German short row heels. They just don't fit right. Um, I chose to do that because of the self-striping and I didn't want to have like super thin stripes around the heel. I wanted to just all my stripes to be the same, the same length. So I used the German short row heel and it just doesn't fit correctly. It doesn't hug my heel. It stretches out a lot right here. It's just not the greatest, but I don't know what else to do in order to keep all of those stripes the way they're supposed to be. Anyways. I still love them. I wore them a lot around Christmas and after Christmas. They were my, my cozy socks that I wore all the time. So that was a lot of fun. Okay, we're through the socks. <laughs> that was a lot. A lot of socks and mitts. I guess just a couple, but still. More than usual for me. Okay, after that, I... Let's see, it was Christmas. We had Christmas. And I got a spinner for Christmas. I got an e-spinner and I absolutely love it. It was like the best gift. I absolutely love it. My mom and my dad and my paternal grandparents. I usually don't say that, but that's the easiest way to say it. My dad's parents, my grandparents, all four of them went in on an e-spinner for me for Christmas. And it was a huge surprise. I had no idea. It was like, anyways, it was the biggest surprise and so much fun. Um, and so I spun this up. This I'm going to count this is a finished object as well. My, my skeins that I spun. <laughs> so I spun this up in the few days after Christmas, the week or whatever after Christmas. I know you're technically supposed to let your bobbin sit before you ply, but I was so excited and I didn't really care with this one because it's so limpy loppy. 
those aren't words <laughs> anyways so lumpy and bumpy i didn't care i just wanted to finish it it was so much fun so this is the first skein that i spun on my hands but the first like full 100 gram skein that i spun on my e-spinner and i love it it turned out so pretty the the fiber came so i ordered it off etsy from i have to do this by hand you guys <laughs> i ordered it off etsy from jakai Jakaira Farms. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, and I'll link them down below because I think their their fiber, their braids are really, really good prices for hand or for hand dyed and for like the fun blends. They have really decent prices, and I'm really happy with all of the stuff that I've gotten from them. So the the colors online on Etsy in the the fiber itself looked more blended and muted than it came it came and i was like whoa that's vibrant that's like wow big chunks of purple and blue i was like oh i hope i like this but i spun it up and i absolutely love it i think it turned out really really well and i i love it i don't know what to knit with this i don't know if it will get knit um it might just sit with love on my shelf <laughs> as my first hand spun ski full hand spun skein in general, it's my first time knitting or spinning like a full 100 grams of something. But anyways, I love it. This is the, it's just multicolored merino in the colorway Mystic Forest. They're on Etsy. I haven't found them anywhere else. Maybe they're on Instagram. I'll link what I can down below, but absolutely loved it. It's pretty soft. I really like it. So sorry, I know that didn't focus, but. So that was a lot of fun. All right, and then shortly after that, I finished another skein. This is into the new year. This is what it looks like. This is also a hand dyed, but this one is BFL and silk, blue face slicer and silk, Tessa silk, and it was so nice to spin. It was very slippery, and so it kept breaking on me. But oh my goodness, I love this fiber so much. I had never worked with BFL before, and my goodness, I'm converted. I need all the BFL. I need all the BFL. I actually have more. <laughs> and because of this, I am now dying to try Sonder Yarn Co. I think that's, yeah, Sonder Yarn Co. They have a BFL Mashem base. And I'm dying to try that. I, they're, can uh, they're based in Canada. And I like, oh. I know Sorry Nordland and Young Folk Knits are doing a, a knit along. I'm one of Sorry Nordland's patterns. It's a gorgeous color work pattern. And I'm dying to get a kit and knit it up. I might do it, but it's it's a, it's a good investment. <laughs> so, so I just need to sit on it. There's only like eight kits available left in my size. So I need to decide quick, but it's gorgeous. And I'm dying to try the yarn. So like, might have to do it. <laughs> Anyway, so I finished this one up. This one's four ounces. This worked up to be about a DK, but you know, fingering to worsted weight because I'm still working on getting more consistent. But this one's actually pretty good. I have I started knitting with this, so I'll show you how it works up because I'm I thought it was super inconsistent, but once I started knitting it up, I saw that it's not quite as bad as I thought it was. Okay. And then the new year started and I was like, I hate all my projects. <laughs> I don't hate my projects. Um, but I, like I said earlier in this episode, I was just like, I ran out of steam 100% on all the things that were on my needles. And I was like, it's the beginning of the new year. And I should, I should have this like burst of energy to finish stuff and like feel good and like, you know, do what you should do and finish your knitting and instead of casting on new things. But then I got to the point where I was like, you know what? I'm all about knitting what you want to knit <laughs> and not forcing yourself to knit things you don't love. And so I cast on new things. So I started and I just needed something quick and easy and that was just gonna give me a boost of motivation to knit and whatnot to get me out of my little slump. So I cast on a little kiddo sweater. <laughs> so cute so this is a sibling sweater by Laura Penrose um, I knit it for my daughter she's two and it turned out so quick so cute it's it's hobby hobby I honestly don't know if it's hobby or hobby but it's their Highland wool just 100% wool I actually love this I hobby is more of a inexpensive yarn and so I always was like not so sure if 
I would love the yarn quality or not just because when something is super inexpensive I'm a little what's the word cautious not that the more inexpensive things are going to be less quality it's just that that's usually what things are so usually when something is on the lower end of the price I'm a little cautious of it but I, I really actually really love this <laughs> it's nice and wooly um, it's slightly, I mean, it's not the softest thing in the world, but I really actually love the texture. Though I have been drooling over natural fibers and, and more rustic wools lately, so, so that might just be it. My daughter wears it, she usually wears it over a t-shirt, so it's on her arms and she can feel it on her neck. She does pull at it a little bit at the collar every now and then, um, but she doesn't complain too much about it. And she does get like little bits of eczema here and there and I don't think it bothers her too much especially after blocking it and washing it I think it softened up a bit it is pilling a bit um but it's not horrendous she's worn this a good handful of times and I think it's adorable it fits her really well I had to knit it significantly shorter so I think the sizes are one to two I mean there's you know smaller sizes than that but I think there's a size one to two and size three to four. My daughter is two, she just turned two in November. So I believe I, I knit her the size three to four cause she's a chunky one, but I knit it shorter than even size one to two. I think it's just cropped. I mean, it's, I mean it covers her little belly really well, um, but I just knit it much shorter in the sleeves and in the body, so, which is good because I was playing a serious game of yarn chicken. <laughs> but anyways, I think it turned out super cute. I absolutely love it. I would knit it again. Like I'll probably knit her more as she grows. It's super cute. It's funny because she, so your kiddos, they have appointments every so often with the pediatrician just to check up, right? And when they're super, super little, it's pretty frequently, like every three months or something like that. But now that she's a toddler, you know, I think once it's, I think it's once you hit one, it's every six months. Um, Anyways, so she, when she was one and a half, she had her pediatrician appointment. And at that point, she was at the 25th percentile for height. So she was very below average in height, very short for her age. But she was in the 75th percentile for weight. So she's a chunky girl for weight. Um, so I was like, when I started knitting the sweater, I was like, oh, she's super short. I'll totally have enough yarn. She's super short, it's fine. Because I'll just knit it very, very short. But... Then after I finished this, I was like, my, my kiddo is short. I just know my kid is short. <laughs> but then we went to the pediatrician a couple weeks after I finished this for her two-year appointment. And turns out she had a massive growth spurt. It wasn't in my head. It wasn't just my head. I've been feeling like she was a massive child. Like suddenly she's huge <laughs> just because she's growing up a lot. But um, turns out she's now in the 75th percentile for height and 70 between the 75th and 90th for weight. Like she grew, she grew so big. I still had to knit this significantly shorter though. So, so it's all good. <laughs> Not that any of that information was important. I, I guess unless you're knitting this for your kiddo as well, just know that you, you can knit it shorter than called for if you would, if you would like. Um, obviously try it on your kiddo and compare the length in the pattern, the schematics in the pattern to some of your kiddos' clothes if you're if you're worried. Okay, more spinning. I know, we're gonna get into a lot of spinning this year. But I also, after that, I spun two of these. <gasps> Look at it, it's so much fun. Okay, I'm gonna like really show it to you. So I got this, this fiber. I saw it on Etsy. It's a, here, I'll show you the the fiber itself. So I saw this fiber on Etsy um, and I just drooled over it and I wanted it so bad, but I didn't order it. And then a couple weeks later, somebody that I follow on Instagram, I think she's Hello Lavender Design. I love her, she's so cute. She started getting into spinning and she spun up some rainbow tweed that she found. This is rainbow tweed. It's a regular natural color of wool with rainbow bits spun into it, or carded into it. Um, but she posted it and I was like, oh my goodness, you got some, I need some, it looks so good. <laughs> and 
And so she, but she didn't, okay, one of the reasons I didn't get it to begin with is because I was worried that it was going to be a little too rainbowy and colorful for me. Um, but she's genius. She spun up, like, it in one single ply, but then plied it with something else that was the same color. I think she got a white uh, rainbow tweed. Mine's gray, but... She, sp she plied it with something else, which stretched out the rainbow tweed so that there's more of it, right? She was able to get two skeins out of one because she pulled in a different braid. Um, but it also made the rainbow less frequent so that it's not just a big blow up of rainbow on your sweater or whatever you're knitting. And I love that idea. I was like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And so it was like the next day <laughs> that I hopped on and ordered, which is weird because I, I don't impulsively buy things. But I sat on this for weeks, so I had to get it, right? Anyways, so I got two braids of these. Um, this is one of them. And then I have the other one within here. I have another skein of this, but it's caked up. And skeins are pretty, so I grabbed the cake, or the skein. And when I was thinking about what I wanted to apply it with, originally I was thinking that I was just going to apply it with something more affordable than the Rainbow Tweed. But then I was like, wait... What if I played it with alpaca? Because alpaca is beautifully drapey. Like it drapes really well and it's super warm and it's crazy soft. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> um, I got some extra random Christmas money that I didn't expect to get. So I had extra money. So I was like, okay, alpaca it is. <laughs> so I ordered two, two braids of alpaca. Oh my. And it's, it's just so slick and drapey that it doesn't stay in this little, <laughs> this thing that I put it in. But I braided it up myself. It came in a ball. But it is so beautiful. It's just white. So I have, it's like the barber, barber, barber pole effect um, or marling effect. Where it's, I have one strand of gray and one strand of white. And I was worried. At first I thought about dyeing my alpaca gray. I couldn't find bare alpaca that was gray for a decent price this was um there I think there I could find some but it was way more expensive than the white so I was just like I'll just get the white and just hold it the way it is or I can dye it if I want to dye it I can dye it but I was terrified to dye it because holy moly this stuff is so soft and so fine I didn't want to felt it so I was like you know what it's fine I'll just I'll just hold it I'll just keep it white it's fine so that's what I did and this is what I got. So I have 200 grams of it spun up already. This is so I have 200 grams of it spun up and I think it's beautiful. I am super excited to knit with it. I've already knit a swatch um, and I'll show that to you. So I actually I also dyed up okay I think alpaca is heavier than wool than merino or this is uh what is this? This is Corydale, I think. This is Corydale wool. I think alpaca weighs more because if you look at this and you look at this, they're significantly different sizes. The alpaca is much, much smaller than the um, this Corydale silk blend. I think that's what it is. Because of that, I can't get as much yardage out of this as I can this. They weigh the same. And so I'm getting, I think that's what's going on. I think that's what's going on. So I got much less yardage than I expected to if I were just getting, if I were just using like a, a merino or something like that. I think that's what my problem is. So I spun it up to be a DK weight and I'm pretty somewhat dis consistent. The, the rainbow tweed was tough to spin because there's bits of tweed going everywhere. And so there are some thicker spots and there are some thinner spots to compensate. <laughs> but I got much less yardage than I expected. So I have to hold a surrey with it, a surrey lace with it, if I want to stretch this and to be able to get a sweater quantity out of it. I think when I'm done, I'll probably have around 800 yards. Maybe, maybe a little bit less. That might be an overshoot. But I think I'll have around 800 yards when I'm done. And so... I need to get creative. So I dyed up some Surrey, nice light gray, to hold with it. And also is making the, the marling a little less noticeable. It's a little bit more subtle because I have the white and the gray, but a gray Surrey, so it's making the white less pronounced, I think. I mean, you can obviously still tell, but it's just blending things together a little bit better. So here's what we've got. 
and I think it's super fun. And I'm, I, this gauge is on very big needles. I think it's a uh, US 10 or something like that. So it's a pretty open gauge, though with the Surrey, I think it's fine. So I don't know exactly what to know with this. I'm sitting on what to do. I think it's just gonna end up being a very open gauge drop shoulder sweater, but we'll see. I was gonna cast this on relatively soon, but I've got some, I kind of reprioritized all the things that I'm doing with my knitting right now so that I can get more designs out because that was a lot of fun and I want to put more out. So I'm reprioritizing things. It's also getting into spring, so I don't know that I want to cast this on right now, but I might because I really want to get going on that project. I also need to finish spinning it before I finish knitting it. So anyways, finish this one up. That was a big explanation for just the skein, but it's a special one. So lots of fun. Oh, one last thing. So with the Sunset Sweater release, I wanted to put out a tutorial with it because it is a little bit more complex, especially if you've never done a drop shoulder construction before. Um, and if you've never done a double folded collar before, and if you've never done color work, or if you've never done color work on this large of a project before. Um, so I was gonna do a tutorial, but I didn't want to knit a whole full size sweater again um, because of the resources and the time. And just because it's such a statement sweater, I don't need two of them for myself. Um, I would probably wear them both, especially if they're different colors, but I just didn't have the time to knit a whole full size sweater. So I knit one for my daughter instead. And I, I haven't had the time to weave in the ends yet. This is a more recent cast off or bind off. And I had to finish it in time. I, I hoped to get the tutorial out the day that the sweater released, but there was like three hours of footage or more, probably way more to edit. And it was just taking so long and my computer was being so slow and I was not gonna stay up till five in the morning editing the tutorial. So I put out the, the pattern, took a few days to chill. Here we are. I'm going to start editing that tutorial and, and getting it out. But, and now that I had my few days to chill, I'll go even these ends, but it's flipping adorable. <laughs> I, I only had the room to do the main chart or chart motif one, two, and three. I did the third motif upside down and I was playing yarn chicken with the yellow a little bit. Um, but I think it's so flipping cute. It fits my daughter so well. It's crazy adorable on her. <laughs> I, when I finished it, I brought it out to, wow, that sounded Canadian. I brought it out to her. <laughs> I brought it out to her and I was like, Ava, do you want to put this on? Said, no, because she's scared it has needles in it or something. But um, I was like, you want to put this on? And she didn't want to. So I showed her my sweater. I was like, look, <gasps> we have the same sweaters. And she got so excited. And she's like, yes! And so we, she jumped up and down, we put it on her, the head is a little tight, I need to rip it out and fix that. But but we put it on her, put mine on, and she was going <gasps> <gasps> And she was so excited to match, and it was so cute. And she's jumping around, running around the house, just squealing, she was so happy. I have the cutest little picture of her and I just hugging, like side hugging and smiling so big with our matching sweaters. It's just adorable. So I absolutely loved this. It was weird to go back and knit it again, but I'm glad I did because I noticed a few things in the pattern that needed just to like change the words a little bit or add one extra thing here and there that my tester didn't quite notice. So I'm really glad that I knit this up because the pattern's slightly better because of it. <laughs> um, a little bit more clear. So yes, this was a lot of fun. Absolutely adorable. Um, there's no plans for a a pattern for a child version yet, but I might because it's flipping cute. I had to adjust the the main motif to fit with the numbers. I did grade it. It's not like it's a different pattern, but with the motifs, I did grade it to fit my daughter. Um, so I just need to grade it to other sizes and I could technically put out a test call for it in the next week, but my brain is not there right now. <laughs> Anyways, there it is, absolutely adorable. I love it so much. <laughs> She's so cute in it. Okay, um, I did finish one more object. I don't have it here with me and I don't think I can share photos of it yet. I knit a sample for Fuzzy Peach Fibers, a hand-dyed yarn company that I absolutely love. Um, but I knit a sample for them. I knit one before, this one I just knit again at the beginning of the year. 
So I, I knit it up and I sent it off. I took some pictures. They're not very good pictures because I wanted to just send it off quickly, but um, I'm excited. So she'll probably post it in the next week or something like that because the collection is launching this week, but go check her out on Instagram because she's got gorgeous, gorgeous colors announced for this collection. Um, she's doing a ton of tonals and a few lightly speckled colorways, which I'm gonna get my hand on some of those lightly speckled colorways um, because they are more suited for garments than like crazy, crazy colored speckled variegated yarns. I'm not super into super variegated and speckled yarns for like sweaters and whatnot, but these are lightly speckled and they're beautiful. And I'm gonna get my hand on some <laughs> for, for this update. So anyways, go check her out. It's, it's gorgeous. Okay, we're finally onto whips. <laughs> this is going by so slow. I'm taking forever. Hopefully I can be a little bit quicker, but let's just start with the things that are kind of in timeout. Um, I have made a little bit of progress, I think. Maybe I haven't on my striped sweater here. And this one is a design. I just need to knit the hems. Um, they're long split hems. And I need to knit the other sleeve, which the other sleeve will go, and I need to bind off the neck, <laughs> the collar. The, the sleeves will go by fast. I hate doing hems. <laughs> I just need to finish it. Um, but I just ran out of steam. Like I said, this would actually be really cute for the spring. Like these are pretty good spring colors. I should just finish it and write up a pattern and get it in testing. I just, I just, <laughs> it's not that I'm not enjoying the knit. I, it's just been on the needles for far, far too long. So I just need to finish it. Um, I've planned out designs for like the next year. I have enough ideas to release one a month for the next year, starting in like April, um, because it takes, you know, three months. I have to knit it up and I gotta get it in testing. By the time it's done, then, then it'll be April for the next one. But I think April, I think. Anyways, that one I've got like in September, just because I don't want to think about it right now. <laughs> Again, not because I'm not enjoying it, it's just been on the needles for too long and I needed something fresh, so. That's the case for most of these. I have two other sweaters that are in timeout right now, not because I'm not enjoying them, just because I needed something fresh to work on because they were on the needles for so long because I stopped knitting for a while so that I could dye up kits and work on the sunset sweater pattern. And then I was just burnt out and there was the holidays. I just needed a break from those things because they just started to feel negative because they sat for so long. So I'm giving myself some time to let them sit without feeling guilty that they're sitting and then I'll feel better about them and I'll finish them up. The next one is, and I don't actually know that I've shared this on, on YouTube anyways. This is a big mess, wow. So this is my Cozy Classic Light. I love the color and this one I have mostly put into timeout because of the color. I love the color, it's just, not a spring color, it's very fall. <laughs> this is a very fall color. And like, I don't even know if it's gonna get worn until next year, so I don't have any motivation to finish it. I love the yarn and I love the color. And it's just stockinette knitting and I don't have, I don't think I have a project going right now that's just stockinette. So this would be nice to have work to work on. Oh, it's so soft. So I should really get this back on the needles just to have some mindless knitting, but but yeah, I just, the motivation is gone because it's very fall colored and I don't know if I'll wear it for a while. So anyways, that's my Cozy Classic Light. I knit this one for the Cozy Classic Cal that I did with Amanda of Birch and Lily and I just need to finish it. Like, it won't take me very long. This one and the striped sweater, not very long at all. Like, they'll be done so soon if I prioritize them. Like I said, I just I just can't right now. All right, and this one, it's not quite on hold. Um, I still work on it here and there. This one, I'm just allowing myself to work on very slowly and just enjoy the process. Because uh, I absolutely love the stitch, I love the pattern, and I love the yarn, and I'm so excited to have it. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not really in a rush to finish it. So I have finally, finished. I don't even know where it was last time I showed you guys this, 
Um, but I finished the front panels. I finished the back panel. I've joined in the round. Not in the round, it's a cardigan. I've joined all the panels together. And I've got a few rows worked of the under of, of the body. Here's the stitch pattern. It is cables and half fisherman's rib. It's gorgeous. I love it. It will block out beautifully. And I'm very excited. I got this yarn at a local yarn shop to me, local to me yarn shop. And it's on a cone. It is a nice warm chocolatey brown. Um half uh 50% merino, 50% is it merino? I don't know if it's merino or just wool. Um, and 50% alpaca. And it, it feels a little rustic and rough right now, but, but I have a few swatches in this yarn because I have another cone of it. Um, but I have some swatches of this yarn that have been like washed and blocked and they're pretty soft and nice. And so I'm excited to have this cardigan eventually. <laughs> But this one, as this one does have cables and half fisherman's rib, it is a slower knit, does take some more time. So I'm not like rushing to get it done. I'm, I'm fine with it taking a while. I'm enjoying the process. I put a few rows in every here and there. I worked on it quite a lot at the end, uh, around Thanksgiving time, I think it was, or New Year, I can't remember. But it was enjoyable and I enjoyed it. I just, since it's such a slow going project with those cables and the half fisherman's rim, I work on it really hard for, you know, a week or two and then I take a break and then I work on it really hard for a week or two and then I take a break. So, and that's totally fine. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying that project. So it's kind of in time. It's just, it's technically in my like rotation of sweaters that I'm working on, but it's not the number one that I'm working on right now. Though I'd love to have another cardigan because I love this cardigan and I wear it all the time. Anyways. There's my Minot cardigan. Okay, next up is a pair of socks. Um, these ones are kind of sort of in timeout. I'm enjoying them. These are the Cider House socks. Oh, I started the heel? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, these are the Cider House socks by Summer Lee. And I got this yarn from my, so was it Shop La Mercerie? I don't remember who did it. I think that's who did it. That did the sock swap, the winter sock swap in the winter. <laughs> uh, it was before Christmas. But this, this red, this nice, gorgeous, deep red is what I got from my, my sock swap partner. Wow, I can't even see if that's focused or not because it's such a dark color. But it's gorgeous. This is a hand dyed yarn. I don't have the tag. Um, I think it's red stag fibers. I'll put the, the name of it. I'll put the link in the description for the shop. Um, I've never worked with their yarn before. It's sad. I have not worked with a lot of other dyers yarn uh, just because it's so much cheaper for me to use my own yarn. <laughs> the reason I got into dyeing is because that was just the cheapest way for me to get quality yarn. But anyways, I'm using my own dyed yarn up top. And I think these colors work together really well. I think they're a lot of fun. So it's a beautiful cable. I'm excited to finish it and block it out so that the cuff or the, it doesn't look like such a straight thin thing because <laughs> there's all sorts of ribbing and cables and stuff in there, but I need to get going on this. I stopped because I got to the heel flap and I don't love knitting heel flaps in the car for some reason. I don't, it's just not enjoyable for me. <laughs> so I was gonna knit the heel flap so that I could bring it back into the car knitting, but I didn't realize that I started the heel flap. So I just need to finish that so that it can, it can get going again. So it was in timeout. It might be taken out of timeout. <laughs> I just kind of sort of lost steam on, on uh, fingering weight socks. I just don't finish them. <laughs> but I do finish DK socks. I started, this is with my own hand spun yarn. So this is with this yarn that I showed you earlier. I love the colors because they're all fairly similar to each other. So if they happen to be plied together, any of the different colors happen to be plied together, they still look good. And they mostly just look marled, or not marled, heathered. And so I think it just turns out really nice rather than having that crazy barber pole effect with totally contrasting colors. But I love this. This took me like three days to knit. Look how fun that is. Um, I think this is the beginning of my skein because like what I very first spun because like the ply like the same colors are applied with themselves 
So I have like the blue, the pink, the gold, the blue, the pink, the gold, right? But then as we get later in the sock, <laughs> things aren't matching up as well and I have different colors applied together. So you have this totally crazy effect with how things are applied and I think it's super interesting. I think next time I spin a hand dyed yarn or hand dyed fiber that has just a lot of different colors, I think I'm gonna try a chain ply so that all the colors kind of stay together. I don't know, I think that'd be interesting. But I love this. This is BFL, and like I said earlier, give me all the BFL, because I love this so much. Uh, this is a DK weight yarn. I'm just following uh, the Crazy Sock Ladies DK Weights uh, vanilla sock pattern. It's free. However, I, I knit the leg shorter, I think, and then I followed everything to pattern, and then instead of knitting, and so the gusset decrease, instead of decreasing back to the original number, I decreased back to 44 stitches. So I cast on 40 stitches, but instead of decreasing back to 40 stitches for my in the, the gusset decrease section, I decreased to 44. Someone suggested with hand spun yarn, if you're knitting socks with, with non-superwash yarn or hand spun yarn, to knit it a little bit big so that as it felt, and it shrinks while it felts, that it, it still fits you. So, so knit your, your socks a little bit big if it's non superwash because, I mean, felting is good in socks to some degree because it makes them stronger. So you want the bottom to felt at least a little bit to strengthen the fibers and really bind them together so that you're less likely to get holes and stuff. Um, but as it felt, it's going to shrink a little bit. So knit your sock a little bit bigger so that it still fits once it felts and shrinks. So that's what I did. I knit my, the, the body, the leg of the sock, um, the normal 40 stitches because I thought my gauge was slightly big. So I thought it was gonna be totally fine, but I was knitting very tightly <laughs> at the very beginning. So it's a little hard to get over my heel right now. So I loosened up my knitting a little bit. So that leg is kind of snug, but I think that's great because I don't think there's gonna be much felting on the leg of my sock. These are mostly gonna be worn around the house, so I don't expect the leg to really felt, so I don't really expect them to shrink. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I think they'll, they hug my, my ankle really nicely. And then the foot is, is not like massively large, but it's not, I don't think it really has much negative ease. It might actually be Perfect. So as it felt, it'll shrink up a little bit and hug my foot really well, I hope. So we'll see. I absolutely love it. It's so warm. Like I, I was finishing it up this morning. I finished this one this morning. I put it on my foot to check the size and I was like, whoa, that baby's soft. And it's, it's really warm. I was wearing hand knit socks this morning. My, my usual, not these ones, fingering weight, 75% wool or super wash wool and 25% nylon. And these are way warmer, just like crazy noticeably warmer than those. And I think it's just the BFL. I don't know if it's more lofty, if um, the way I spun it just makes it more lofty. It's DK weight, but these are still warmer than these. And I think it also has the, something to do with the fact that this is just much more frizzy and fuzzy than this is, whoops. And so those frizzy fuzzies kind of fill in the gaps a little bit better and keep it warmer. I don't know. I think the gauge on this might also be a little tighter than this as well. So I don't know, but I absolutely love it. I, I, I love BFL. This is BFL and Tessa Silk, Tessa Silk blend. It feels so good. I, I need all of the BFL. Give me all the BFL. <laughs> so those are my socks. I need to cast on the other one tonight or tomorrow because I'll be editing tonight. But, um, you know these ones are gonna get done quick. I, I'm not gonna have any second sock syndrome with those because I want to wear them. They're so cozy and warm, so. <laughs> okay, we're finally onto new projects. I might have to switch up my battery at some point, but let's see. So I started the, I started the, wow. <laughs> I started the Sweet Shop Blanket by Lara Penrose um, in December to knit up my advent with. And this is the advent that I dyed this year. I went for a rainbow, so there's all sorts of rainbows in there. And it's a uh, retro rainbow, so there's brights, there's moodies. I think it's really fun. So that's what that is. Don't expect a lot of progress to be made on this all the time. 
This is just my easy knitting whenever I want to throw an extra square on there. I have all the colors knit into it so far. I just need to finish all the yarn. I just need to add everything in there. I have each colorway in there. I just got to add on to it. Um, I'm loving it. I love the yarn. It's really fun. And the pattern is fantastic. It's so satisfying to knit up. The pattern was very well written and very helpful. I love the construction. It's going to be such a warm, fun, cozy blanket someday. And I think I have a, a casual goal <laughs> to finish it within this year. But like blankets, they just, for me, they just get put on the back burner and I work on them every now and then and I'm okay with that. And because I'm okay with that, you can be okay with that too. <laughs> I make the rules for my own knitting. So my blankets, I start them, I work on them every now and then, and it's okay. They don't have to be finished fast. Okay, three new sweaters that are like the ones that are in my rotation that you will see a lot of that I'm excited to share. Okay, first up is a test knit. I have not done a test knit in a long time. I kind of decided to stop doing test knits because I just, I want to focus, okay. Test knits became a thing for me where I was like, Ooh, a test knit. Do I have yarn for it? Let's do it. Which I love a lot of the things that I've test knit. I, I just, this year, I really want to focus on knitting things that I absolutely, absolutely want to knit and that I've been wanting to knit for a long time. Things that I am like completely in love with. And so not to say that the test knits that I've done in the past that I'm not completely in love with them. I just really want to dial in on my knitting and do more knitting for me um, so that I have time to fit more designs in rather than knitting for other people. I just love this design so much. And I had the yarn in stash and I didn't quite know what to do with the yarn yet. But then the test call came out and I was like, yes, 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 me, 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 me. <laughs> so this is the Sea View sweater, pullover, Sea View sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl. And I just have the back panel going so far. Um, this test knit is a faster one. It's a shorter deadline, but she only wants us or, or is only requiring us to finish the yoke and one sleeve, which I'll be able to do in no problem. So I'm very excited. Um, this yarn is some oopsie yarn. So there is little bits of, I mean, every now and then there's an accident, little, accidental little blop of blue dye or red dye, um, but it's easy to cut those out or, or knit over them or something. But anyways, I'm super excited. It's a gorgeous, light beige bone color. This is the fog colorway that's in the sunset sweater kit collection. <laughs> Remember you can order kits like the full kit or you can just order individual colors, um, whatever you want to do. So this is the fog colorway. I also dyed it up on the Surrey base and it's so good. Oh, I love it. It's so good. It's so soft. This is going to be such a warm, thick, cozy sweater, which I think we've had our winter for this year. We've had our coldest days. I think it's starting to warm up. So I don't know if this will get much use this year, but I'm enjoying it a lot. It's It's been a good knit for me, so I'm excited. I'm excited about this one. It's beautiful. Okay, two more sweaters to show, and then we'll get into acquisitions. <laughs> and one of them is a design, so that's kind of fun. Okay, this one is the Wood Anemone by Sorry Nordland. And this one's on my Nick 9 for this year, though I'm not sure how I feel about it the yarn choice so we'll see here it is it's it's a lace yoke so it's a raglan uh circular circular yoke that's what i'm trying to say with lace up top and then it's just stockinette once you split for sleeves i have not split for sleeves yet i have been slow going on this one i started at the beginning of the year i just needed a knit that made me happy <laughs> and this is what filled that it was exciting with the lace and soft and fun yummy color and so I cast it on and it's been enjoyable but I've put my priorities on something else so this is in the rotation I still work on it but I'm focusing more on my sea view and then the one I'm about to show you but here it is this is all I have so far I would like to finish the yoke in the next like week or so so I can block it and see what I like to make sure that it's fitting correctly for one and for two to see if I like it. With Surrey, Surrey is more fuzzy than mohair, I think. And so it doesn't have as good stitch definition. Obviously, you're it, mohair, you're not gonna have great stitch definition, but um, it's. I'm just worried that the fine details of this pattern are going to get lost in the Surrey. 
The Surrey and the, the fingering weight are also quite different colors. It's the same dye recipe, but just with the way Surrey dyes, it's a non-superwash, this is a superwash. And Surrey just doesn't take dye the same way that you know a regular wool will. And so, so, so it is marling a little bit. You can really see it on the collar, which I might be totally fine with. Um, and I might not love it so much. I need to knit more of it to decide for sure. I've lost a little bit of steam on it because I'm worried that I won't like it and that the yarn isn't working for me. But I, I've committed to myself that I'm going to knit the yoke, block it and see if I like the colors, like, you know, the, the two yarn combinations, not because of the fiber content, but because of the colors. Um, but also to see if I like it with the Surrey or not because of the stitch definition, like if, if the stitch definition is good. Right now, I'm a little worried that the stitch definition is not so good, but the lace is much smaller and more fine right now because I have much less knitting. The little leaf uh, motif gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you get throughout the yoke, so I just need to keep knitting and get, I need to get to it and finish it so that I can really see what's going on and make a decision. All right. And the last thing on the needles is, I think I'm going to call it the re-summer sweater or the re-summer pullover, R-I-E. Um, and I'll, <laughs> I'll explain why in a little bit, but I don't have very much done. I would have a lot more done, but I had to rip it out probably 20 times because it just wasn't working. So what this is going to be is like a... I guess I'll, I wasn't going to fully explain it, but I guess I will. So it's a drop shoulder. It's going to have only like two inches of positive ease for me anyways, and then it's gonna be striped between this little flower lace motif and garter stitch lines. <laughs> so it's gonna be stripes. So lace motif, garter stitch, lace motif, garter stitch. And I think it'll be really fun. This, the increases through that stitch motif plus the garter stitch ridge and just all of those things were a little bit tough to figure out in the beginning, but I've, got it and I finished that first chunk of lace and I think I'm set. I don't think I'll have to do, I might have to do increases at, I will, okay, I'll have to do decreases at the underarm for, for my size, but like I figured it out. I don't have to, or now I'll have to do increases for the neckline, but, but it'll be good. So I'm excited. The, the neck will also be like a large scoop neck, not like crazy huge, but like a good more wide crew neck. And then Nice thin ribbing for the summer vibes, I guess. I guess it's more of a spring. Maybe I'll say it's the re-spring sweater, but that sounds a little weird. <laughs> I don't know, but anyways, the reason I'm calling it re is because that's what my family called me when I was a little girl. <laughs> so Cam Re, R-I-E. So my nickname growing up was Re. I haven't been called Re in forever, but that's just a fun little memory, Re. <laughs> and I, growing up as a little girl, I loved flowers. I loved yellow flowers and I was originally thinking I was going to do this yellow but or I was going to do this one white and I was going to do a tank top in yellow. I might still do the tank top yellow. I just need to decide but so I was like oh flowers in yellow. Re. So I thought that'd be perfect but and I just thought I don't know it's kind of kind of fun. I hope that's going to turn out okay. I can't really see what's going on until I have much more of it knit and in the round. I might hate it. <laughs> I might hate it when I'm done but I've been wanting to knit some kind of textured stripe drop shoulder summer sweater type thing for quite a while and I settled on this lace motif so we'll see how it goes. I have a lot more knitting to do on it before I decide if I like it or not but, but we'll see. Um, I did dye this yarn. This yarn is a new base. This is a it's 50% superwash merino fine superwash merino. I think the micron might be like 19. Um, I don't I'll have to check the website again, but then it's 50% Pima cotton, which Pima cotton is one of the finer, like softer cottons out there. And so this yarn is super soft. It dyed up beautifully and I love it. I'm not much of a blue person. I love blue. I just feel like blue washes me out. But I, I, I was planning on doing this sweater white, but I have like three other summer spring plans that are also planned to be white or beige. And so I was like, I gotta add more color in there. 
And I wanted to branch out a little bit. So I was like, okay, we'll give blue another shot. I like blue and I used to wear blue all the time. But once I started like watching family videos of myself with my daughter, cause we film a lot with our daughter, like memories and stuff. Um, we would look back on those and it's like, wow, I, don't, I just don't look in that color, right? Once you start filming yourself more, you realize what colors work and what don't. So I tried to find a nice warmer blue and I think this one's pretty good. I had to send photos to my sister-in-law and ask her like, hey, do you think this one works? <laughs> Cause cool, I know cool, blue is a very cool tone, but lighter blues that are very cool toned are just don't work for me at all. But I think this one is slightly warmer. I mean, what is a warm blue? I don't know, but it's a nice medium blue. I didn't want to do a dark one because that's very wintry. So I wanted a nice warm medium blue. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but this hits it for me and it matches my nails kind of, sort of, my crappy nails. So we'll see. Um, I'm excited to get more work on this. I, I hope to get it into testing by the end of the month, but that's a lot of knitting to do, especially when they only have this much to do. And, and I don't really know what to do. I mean, I know I have the math worked out. I just, there's a lot of work to do. There's probably going to be a lot of ripping out. There's going to be a lot of I, I need to do a lot of chart creating. I need to make a lot of charts for all the different sizes um, and grade it. So, you know, we'll see if it happens, but that's the goal. That's, <laughs> that's the goal. Um, so yeah, this is the back panel. Um, I'm holding two strands double, so it's DK weight, so it knits up a little bit faster. If I do do a tank top version in this, it will be, I don't know if it'll be DK weight or fingering weight, but that's the plan so far. It's been fun. I've ripped it out a lot of times, but I'm still hanging in there. <laughs> I am loving the yarn. I'm loving the space. Okay, that is it as far as projects and finished objects and stuff like that go. I have quite a bit of acquisitions, but that's only because it was Christmas <laughs> and I had a lot of Christmas money to spend, which is awesome because I, I don't like splurge a lot throughout the year. My two times of the year that I get to like really splurge and and spend a lot of money on whatever I want is Christmas and my birthday. Um, so I stocked up. <laughs> I stocked up on yarn. Well, mostly on fiber. I, cause I got the spinner for Christmas and then I took my Christmas money and went and splurged on a lot of really gorgeous, gorgeous fibers. And so I'm set up on fiber for the rest of the year, pretty much. <laughs> that doesn't mean I won't get more. It's just easier for me to buy fiber because I mean, it's, it just is cheaper than yarn, it feels like. <laughs> a sweater quantity of fiber that would make a gorgeous sweater is cheaper than a sweater quantity of yarn that would also make a gorgeous sweater. So yeah, I showed some of these last time in my like goals video, but I'll just share again because they're beautiful. So here is my, uh, this is a merino, a dark brown merino fiber it's beautiful sorry if you hear twicket moving around over there <laughs> it's beautiful there's and i don't know if you can see but there's subtle differences in the color there's darker spots and lighter parts it's gorgeous and it's rustic it's it's soft like i could probably wear it next to skin this will become a cardigan and it will be probably held with a surrey lace but i'm excited i love it, it smells good <laughs> Um, so I got a sweater quantity of that. I also got a sweater quantity of this. It's BFL. Oh, I love it. It's so good. It's so soft and squishy and lustrous and I just need all the BFL. It's so beautiful. So this is a nice oatmeal color. I am, it's, I don't know that it's picking up the color perfectly, uh, but it's beautiful. This is going to make a gorgeous heathered beige-ish oatmeal-ish yarn. I cannot wait to spin this but it's so gorgeous that I want to get a little bit better at spinning before I start. So like I said earlier, the socks, this sock showed me that I'm not like, your yarn can be pretty inconsistent and still look pretty good. Like this is unblocked and it just kind of, I mean, it's, you can definitely tell that it's hand spun and there's some lumpy bits in there, but it's still pretty good. And this was not particularly, I've gotten better at spinning since then. I'm going to finish up that rainbow the rainbow tweed and the alpaca spin. And, and then I'll, I might jump into to one of those two. So I got a sweater quantity of the BFL, oatmeal, the oatmeal BFL and the dark brown merino. I might jump into those, but I might 
um, give something else a shot first. So when I ordered the the fiber for from this and this, I also got this one. They're so decently priced from that that seller. I love it, and they have so many gorgeous things. So this one is a um, Shetland Bio Nylon Blend. It's perfect for socks. Well, hello. It's from Dikaira Farms again. Um, it's a sock. It's intended for socks. There's nylon in there. I've never spun. No, oh, yes, I have. I've spun yarn with or fiber with nylon in it on my drop spindle. Um, but I'm very excited. This is beautiful. It's the amber brass, ambered brass colorway. Um, it's just a blend of a bunch of different rust colors, and I have been obsessed with rust lately. So these will be gorgeous. I don't care that this is not like. It's a very fall winter color and we're getting into spring stuff soon, but I don't care. It's for socks. It's gorgeous. It's so soft. Um, this might actually be the next thing that I spin after my rainbow tweed. We'll see. I really want to try like a chain ply, a three ply. And since this is for socks, I might actually try to do that because I think I want to do this in a chain ply just to get better stitch definition because I'm hoping to do the Ingrid sweater with this. So I want decent stitch construction, stitch construction, stitch definition. <laughs> and so I think, you know, having more plies that are kind of tight will help with that. Um, so I might try that out with this before I try that on, on that, but. And then I also got some of this. Look how fun that is. I got this at a local yarn shop. They have a similar to this. Um, that I purchased in the past. That is the one that has nylon in it, but they didn't have as much as I wanted when I went to the store to get it um, this time around. So I got this one because I noticed that they have this one. This one, I didn't love the color as much as the other one, but they had more of this, and so I got this. But now that I, because I took it home and I braided it up and put it into this little, you know, it's beautiful. Look at it. It'll be so good. So I love this. A lot of people, not a lot of people, I don't really know. I'm still new into this whole world, but some people avoid fibers like this because once you spin it, 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 they call it spinning mud, I think, where once you spin it, it basically just looks like a neutral color and you lose all of those beautiful colors. But that's what I like. <laughs> I like that once I spin it up, it's going to look like a nice neutral with little hints of this and that here and there. And when you look closer, you see all of those fun colors. So I don't know, I just think it'll be a very interesting yarn and I'm extremely excited about this one. So I also got some Knit Picks Stroll Tweed. This is their like sock fingering weight. Um, there's some nylon in there. I'm excited to try more brands this year. And so Knit Picks is one of those that I wanted to try. So I got their, <laughs> I got their, um, Stroll Tweed, and I think it's perfect. So one of the sock patterns that I've just been drooling over forever and absolutely love is, oh shoot, and now I'm gonna forget the name. It's a Summer Lee pattern, and I'll put the picture on the screen and the, the name down here somewhere, but, and I love it so much, and I love the yarn that she used. I just love the way they look, and I was like, you know what? I have Christmas money. I'm gonna treat myself, and I'm going to get the exact yarn that she used. So I did. So that's why I got this, um, and I'm glad I did. It's so soft, and it's tweed, and I love tweed, and it's a nice gray. Mm, I, I'm so excited to knit these at some point. It's probably just gonna sit on my shelf for quite a while um, until I get so through some other socks that I've got on the needles. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited for this, and I'm excited to try more brands this year. I, I wanna try some more of Knit Pick stuff this year. I wanna try Sonder DK, I want to try, let's see. There are some US, there's smaller owned US yarn companies that are newer and there's gorgeous, gorgeous yarns. And I would love to try some of those, um, like smaller yarn companies here in the US that just make gorgeous, rustic-y wools. Yeah, anyways, that's not what this part of the video is about, but I'm excited to try that out. Um, I'm also going to take a trip and find me some knitting for all of this year. So I'm excited to try different brands, but so I got that one. Um, oh, I forgot to show this one, this fiber. So 
Um, I have a goal to knit a sweater out of every, out of, okay, I have a goal to knit a sweater made out of yarn or fiber or whatever that was grown or grown and processed in each state that we live in. So far that's only been Utah, California, and Ohio. And I have my Ohio yarn. That was my Minot cardigan. I also have another cone for, to make a zipper sweater with. So I have my Ohio yarn. That yarn is processed here, is spun here. Um, so that's my Ohio yarn. I'll have my Ohio sweaters and sweater and cardigan. So I got that idea midsummer. It was when I was visiting my parents in Utah. So when I was staying with my mom, we went on a little side-by-side -side ride <laughs> throughout the neighborhood because that's what we do in Southern Utah is ride um, ATVs everywhere. Anyways, we were driving around the neighborhood and we went to um, a family friend's house just to look at their sheep because my daughter was with us. And I was like, wait, I can't find like good Utah yarn, but like that was grown and processed in Utah. But I have so many family friends that have sheep and alpaca and llama and stuff. And so my mom called around and there's somebody that I grew up. So she lived within kind of our neighborhood area growing up and then she moved and then we moved and we happened to move into the same neighborhood that she was living in, which is funny. I mean, it's not that, that big of a coincidence because I grew up in a small town, but so we basically have always lived near each other and she's just always been a family friend. So she has an alpaca, a Surrey alpaca. And so she's had fiber sitting around forever and my mom got it from her she said she she was going to use it and then she just she couldn't anymore so it was sitting around unprocessed my mom got it from her and she processed it for me she got a little tiny drum carter <laughs> she picked it and she cleaned it and then she carded it all herself as a surprise for me for christmas <laughs> she hasn't completely finished it um but it's beautiful i have you know about 168 grams so far but she has more, she just needs to finish cleaning it. I just need to take a trip to Utah and help her clean it because it's a big job. And she said it was pretty dirty and needed a lot of help. But anyways, so that's my Utah yarn. It's going to become yarn. My fiber from Utah that will become my Utah sweater. So I'm really excited about that. I also recently found a California place that I'm gonna get fiber from pretty soon. So that's exciting. I also got myself a nice metal zipper. I thought I was gonna cast on the zipper sweater within the next couple weeks, but after kind of project planning and design planning, I've decided that that's not completely practical for me right now, but I got the zipper. I got the zipper before I decided that it was not time. Um, but I got a black zipper. I love the zip. I got these, this on Etsy. It's, it's tough to find a nice metal zipper that looks good um, here in the US. I know Petite Knit has the one that she uses on her website, but you have to pay international shipping, right? So I found this on Etsy and I will link the shop below because they have so many different colors and lengths of zippers and I love this. I think this is gonna be perfect. I love the way the, the zipper pull looks. I think it looks great. So I think this um, Etsy store is a perfect, perfect option for those of us in the US that want a good zipper, a good metal zipper, but don't want to order internationally. Um, or another option, I saw that there's some similar to this, I think, on Amazon, but it's like a pack of 10. And I don't want 10 zippers. So, so this is perfect. It was only, it's less than $3, so. It's perfect. I love it. I'm, I'm excited to use it. And because I have it, I'm that much more tempted to just cast on the zipper sweater, even though it's not, even though it's not very practical for me to cast on right now and I don't necessarily have the time, I'm tempted just because of the zipper. <laughs> Anyways, I got more fiber stuff for Christmas, but those are like the main ones, the more exciting ones. I mean, besides my e-spinner, but I don't want to lug that in here. Um, but yeah, anyways, those are my like main acquisitions. There's, you know, obviously more because it's been months since the last time I showed, but that's what I got to show you today. <laughs> so that is everything. Thank you for sitting through this big, massive, long update video. That was a lot um, because it's been a few months and we've had Christmas in that time. Um, 
But yes, thank you for watching. Thank you for being exciting about what I have to share <laughs> and for all the support with the sunset sweater and, and all of my other things that I put out there. Um, hopefully I can get into more of a consistent or regular designing schedule kind of thing because I it was a fun process and I want to do more. I have a ton of ideas. Um, I just got to get to it. So we'll see. If you liked this video and if you like, you know, spinning, knitting, dyeing, all the things. <laughs> and if you're interested to see more designs, more hand spun yarn, just more projects in general, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss videos from me in the future. I know I've been pretty, pretty absent here on YouTube, but I'm back now and we're, we're good now. <laughs> we're gonna keep going. Um, but yeah, that's everything. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.